Hello everyone, I am the name's Jer, and for those of you new to the channel, welcome. And for those of you returning, well, you can probably tell already that this is going to be a little bit different than my normal content. So, in the past year I've become increasingly more obsessed with reacquiring my old game collections, and with the PlayStation 2 being one of my absolute favorite consoles, I figured it'd be fun to do a video of the top 20 games that I feel best represent this era. Now obviously these are just my opinions and they're going to be very heavily biased on what I grew up with personally, so let me know in the comments below what your favorite PlayStation 2 games are because I'm sure I'm going to miss a ton of them. With that being said, some things to get into before this video starts, uh, I am only including one game per series, so no we will not see Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 through American Wasteland take up the top 5 as much as I would love to do that. And secondly, I am running all of these games via emulation on PC, whether it's through PCSX2 or RPCS3, and then if there is a PC version, I'm going to be using that. That way we can play in glorious 1080p. Now with that being said, let's get into the video. The PlayStation 2 was Sony's second venture into video games, as they hoped to piggyback off of the massive success of the original PlayStation console. Releasing in 2000 and being produced all the way into 2013, the PS2 has one of the longest lifespans of any home console to this day. The sixth generation was a simpler time, before publishers were locking content behind paywalls and season passes, a generation coming after the pointy and blocky 64-bit generation and opening up a world of new possibilities. Developers now had a console with enough graphical power to see all of their ideas brought to life, and with gaming still being significantly smaller than the behemoth of an industry it has become today, big publishers were still willing to allow developers to take larger creative risks and make games that were just plain fun. So without further ado, let's kick off this list of the 20 best PS2 titles from gaming's golden era. Starting off at number 20, this is going to be the first of many extreme sports games on this list. It's truly hard to explain just how enamored pop culture was with extreme sports back then, unless you were around to experience it. And so, the first spot on this list goes to MX vs ATV Unleash. This renowned off-road racer by Rainbow Studios took the developer's long-standing series ATV Off-Road Fury, its newer motocross entry MX Unleashed, and merged the two into one game and it turned out amazing. I'm sure plenty of us have some incredible memories of playing the original ATV games, and I almost picked the first one of those over this release, but there is just so much offered here in MX vs ATV Unleashed that I just had to go with it. After three ATV games and one motocross game, Rainbow had completely refined the gameplay and controls in their engine, and with the addition of trophy trucks, buggies, and even planes, there was no shortage of content here. Over a decade later, finding your rhythm through each jump is still just as satisfying as it ever was. With everything presented in MX vs ATV Unleashed, it's easy to see why it's one of the most definitive entries in the series. At number 19 we have Star Wars Battlefront 2. Back before Disney bought the Star Wars license and let EA bastardize the series, LucasArts and Pandemic Studios redefined what third person shooters are. Star Wars Battlefront 2 had it all, amazing controls, great gunplay, Jedis and heroes, and those oh-so-incredible space battles. The game spans both the original trilogy and the prequels, so fans of both will be pleased, and there's plenty of recognizable locales to appease anybody's geeky fandom. What was a truly amazing aspect of this game was getting to experience large-scale warfare online, something that had really only been seen in the at-the-time PC-exclusive Battlefield series. With these large-scale battles, great balancing, and matches that required strategy and teamwork, Battlefront 2 is a game that is just all-around fun and one of the best Star Wars experiences there is. Carving in at number 18 is SSX3. I'm sure it's hard to believe today, but back during the 6th generation, EA were one of the biggest and most well-respected publishers around. They gave their developers a large amount of creative freedom and expression, and it really shows in their titles from this time, especially in their over-the-top sports-based subsidiary, EA Sports Big. The SSX series became a huge success by blending fast-paced snowboard racing with exaggerated tricks and style, so by the time the third game in the series came around, they had fully mastered the formula. The developers designed the game to center around one single mountain with three peaks, containing races and other events that took place in key areas around the map. The huge mountain can be carved from top to bottom in a single run with no load screens or slowdowns, just blissful shredding. It was impressive then, and it's impressive now. 
The visuals look great with vibrant colors and high poly character models which were matched with a memorable soundtrack that contributed to one seriously awesome atmosphere. The game was followed by SSX on tour which was great in its own right but it never really seemed to recapture the magic of SSX3 which is why this entry remains the highest peak in the series. Moving on to number 17 we have The Simpsons Hit and Run. From the first moment after booting up, Hit and Run feels like a more family friendly version of Grand Theft Auto and honestly, it works. Most of us were probably too young to play the GTA series at the time, and so this made for a great substitute for those with stricter parents. The show's cartoonish humor and wacky style are all present and lend themselves well to the game's open world. One, 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 go! Getting to cause mayhem in Springfield as our favorite characters is simply charming and downright entertaining. Some aspects haven't aged quite as gracefully as other titles on this list, like its very corridor approach to open world design and a decent amount of missions that are fetch quests, but it's still thoroughly endearing and a blast to play when it's at its best. It's one of those games that you just have to experience for yourself to truly understand why it is that it's so good, and one that keeps getting better with nostalgia. Swinging through number 16, we have Spider-Man 2. This is the game that broke the stigma that movie tie-in games are bad by showing that with some care and attention, movie-based titles can be more than just a quick cash grab. It's hard to speak on everything this game got right in such a limited time, but that won't stop me from trying. The game adopted the newly popular open world formula for the Web Slinger and lets you explore New York City however you pleased. As if that weren't enough, the team at Treyarch developed a new swinging mechanic that required webs to actually attach to something if you wanted to swing, meaning that if you were above the rooftops, you'd have no options for mobility. If you have enjoyed Insomniac Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, then you 100% have this game to thank, as the PS4 game was almost built entirely off of the groundwork of Spider-Man 2's design, and is seen by many as a spiritual successor. With some of the most refined Spidey gameplay, this entry in the Wallcrawler saga was one of the most memorable games of the generation. Slithering into the 15 spot is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Man, does Kojima know how to make games. I know many will say that MGS2 Sons of Liberty is the better game, but for me, Snake Eater was the standout. The game's fresh approach to stealth made it unlike anything else, utilizing a new camouflage mechanic that has you swapping camos and face paint to constantly adapt and blend into your surroundings. The new survival system, which requires you to eat and rest, made it that much more interesting as well, and it really immerses you into this world of covert jungle stealth during the Cold War. The game is also visually impressive, with an art style that is still incredibly pleasant to look at even to this day, making me almost forget that it's actually a 6th gen game and not a 7th. Even though the series has continued to release hit after hit, it's still Metal Gear Solid 3 that stands out as the most memorable in the series. Sneaking into number 14, we have yet another stealth game and an entry from one of my favorite series, Hitman Blood Money. Let me tell you, this was a hard one to pick between. Hitman 2 Silent Assassin was a fantastic entry in the series and the first one I played, and Contracts is also a phenomenal choice but I decided that Blood Money was the clear winner between the three. The fourth game in the Hitman series has some of the most realized and open-ended levels in any game and was truly ahead of its time. Each level has so many different ways to approach your targets and eliminate them that I still find myself discovering new methods to execute each kill every time I go back to it. With comprehensive controls, a fantastic disguise system, and some of the absolutely best maps in the whole series, Blood Money remains one of the best games in the entire franchise and a fan favorite. Shredding the 13th spot is Guitar Hero 2. The original Guitar Hero caused quite the stir when it released back in 2005, and the sequel was no exception. Taking clear inspiration from Dance Dance Revolution, Guitar Hero brought the rhythm game genre to a new audience of rockers and metalheads, utilizing a guitar-shaped controller and replacing the big dance hits with rock and metal anthems. And while the original Guitar Hero was great in its own right, it was the follow-up Guitar Hero 2 that really nailed the game's formula. The song list was incredible and can be argued still that it was the best one in the series, with hits like Sweet Child of Mine, Killing in the Name, and Freebird being some of the biggest cuts in the track list. I know for me it played a huge part in my musical taste and introduced me to tons of my favorite bands as well as eventually getting me into playing real guitar. Guitar Hero 2 was a game that many of us spent an unhealthy amount of hours playing and one that impacted both the gaming industry and music in more ways than it ever gets credit for.
Knocking Out number 12 is a game that even most of today's brawlers can't hope to hold a candle to. That game is of course Def Jam Fight for New York. This game has exploded in a resurgence of popularity recently, and for good reason. The Hip Hop Field Street Fighter title from Electronic Arts is a great example of just why EA was held in such high regard back then, and will not be the last example on this list. The second Def Jam title had five expertly balanced fighting styles and a customization suite that makes even modern games jealous. With the influence of the Def Jam brand, EA was able to pull together one of the biggest all-star cast gaming has ever seen with the likes of Snoop Dogg, Ludacris, and Ice-T just to name a small fraction. The combat was arcadey and easy enough to pick up, but would really start to challenge you towards the end of the game, requiring you to utilize the environment, pickups, and your massive moveset to knock out each opponent. EA tried to revive the series on 7th gen with Def Jam Icon, but it never seemed to be able to quite live up to the legacy of Fight for New York. Oh yes, rolling up number 11 is quite possibly one of the most bizarre games I've ever played. That game, of course, is Katamari Damashi. Who would have ever thought that a game about rolling a ball around that collects junk would be so damn addictive and become one of the most notable games on the PS2? The game has a weird but unique blocky art style and one of the most infectious soundtracks I've ever heard. Something a lot of people don't seem to mention about Katamari is how technically impressive it was. I mean, the game has a level where you start out the size of a car tire and eventually grow the ball big enough to pick up entire buildings and islands, all seamlessly with no loading screens. If that isn't impressive, I don't know what is. With a handful of spin-offs and remakes, Katamari Damashi remains as a staple in the PlayStation 2 catalog. Well, here we are, we've made it to the halfway point, and judging by how great these last 10 games were, it can only get better from here. So, at number 10, we have Downhill Domination. I know this isn't one of the most popular games on the system, but it is always one of the first that comes to mind for me when I think about the PS2. This downhill mountain biker may sound like your average two-wheeled racing game on the surface, but it's the execution of this formula that stands out. The arcade format suits the game well as you can grab pickups like speed boost and upgrades for a road rash-like combat system. Its sense of speed will always make you feel like you're defying death while barreling down the game's many diverse and lively courses, which include places like a Hawaiian volcano, desert mesas, and a downtown metropolis. It may not have introduced any revolutionary ideas or concepts, but it executes the genre so perfectly, which is why it sticks out in memory so well. Slashing up the number 9 spot is the original God of War. This PlayStation exclusive differentiated itself from the rest of the first party games on the console and was well received for it. Where other Sony games were colorful and more family friendly, God of War was heavily adult themed and was unapologetically violent. Kratos rips his enemies to shreds with a fantastical spray of blood and gore and has one of the most refined combat systems on the console. The choice to focus on Greek mythology was an excellent decision and lends itself well to the gameplay, even having you fight a Hydra in the very first moments of the game. God of War spawned two direct sequels and spin-offs, and its soft reboot in 2018 is revered as one of the best games of all time, leaving Kratos' legacy one that won't soon be forgotten. Our number 8 spot is the only game that could make crashing a car just as exciting as racing it. Burnout 3 Takedown is what many consider to be the peak of the series. Another game from EA's golden days, the third Burnout game expanded on the fast-paced racing and crashes of the first two and implemented the most crucial feature, and where it gets its namesake, Takedowns. Burnout 3 encourages you to smash into your opponents and try to wreck them. This design led to the creation of the Road Rage races, where you try to take down as many other racers as you can before the time runs out. Road Rage was an absolute game changer and is probably the best non-traditional mode in a racing game, and certainly the most entertaining in Burnout. The Crash Mode also makes a return, and is better than ever, having you speed towards an intersection trying to cause the largest pileup you can muster. It's amazing, and still fills me with joy so many years later. Burnout 3 Takedown is arcade racing perfected and does everything in its power to be as chaotic and enjoyable as it can. Shoving number 7 into a locker, are you surprised that it took this long to see Rockstar Games on this list? Bully, which is also known as Canis Canem Edit overseas, was released at the very end of the PlayStation 2's life cycle and offered one hell of a final bang before Rockstar fully invested in the next generation of consoles. The game has incredible atmosphere and charm and borrows heavily from the sandbox gameplay that made Rockstar's other open world series so popular. Roaming around Bullworth Academy and its neighboring town as Jimmy Hopkins is just so damn fun, 
and hearing the witty banter between characters and partaking in schoolyard shenanigans are just a small part of this massive game. I mean seriously, I could talk all day about how much I love this game and why it is probably my all-time favorite, but I'll save that for another day. The number 6 spot sees yet another EA and EA Sports big game make the list. NBA Street Vol. 2 is the epitome of why the Street spin-off series were so popular. The game is just so over the top and dramatic with its ridiculous game breaker moves and a Tony Hawk style trick system for breaking ankles, it turns monotonous parts of the sport into something just as fun and exciting. The game also has a vibrant cast of fictional exaggerated characters as well as the typical NBA legends and all-stars. The NBA Street series unfortunately joins other EA titles that were basically killed off by the publisher during the next console generation. By forcing the developers to release subpart entries of Def Jam, SSX, and NBA Street, the series were eventually shut down from poor sales of these final entries. But regardless of all that, we still have the amazing original three street ball games, and Volume 2 stands out as the all-star of that group. And here we are, the top five games. Really, you could put these games in any order you want at this point because they're all 10 out of 10s to me, um, but this is the way I feel that they stack up, so let's get into it. Starting off the final five is yet another Rockstar Games classic. Building off the previous two entries, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition is the pinnacle of this arcade racing series. With the Dub Magazine collaboration, Rockstar were able to pull together an absolutely massive list of licensed customization pieces for every single vehicle in its already impressively large car selection. Their partnership was also able to get them an incredible soundtrack that perfectly fit the atmosphere of the underground car racing scene at the time. On top of the amazing customization suite, Midnight Club 3 refines the controls from the last two games and makes its unique choose-your-own-path style races even more exciting. There's so much content here, and the remix version of the game makes for a total of four different open world cities to race in, and even more cars, bikes, and songs to enjoy. Rockstar absolutely nailed it with this game, and is the reason why many still consider this one of the best racing games of all time. There were a lot of amazing platformers on the PlayStation 2, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and & Clank, and Spyro to name a few, but none of them had the impact that the Jack & Daxter series did, and so at number 4, Jack 2 takes the cake. The second game in the Jack & Daxter series takes some serious inspiration from both the Grand Theft Auto and Tony Hawk series, but even though it wears its heart on its sleeve, there's no denying just how good the game was. You still have the amazing platforming mechanics from the first game, but now Jack can also utilize an arsenal of weapons to help him take down baddies and can get around this new metropolis on both hovercraft and hoverboard. The game has a clever and charming narrative that really showcases the early stages of the fantastic writing staff at Naughty Dog, who went on to create the hugely successful Uncharted series and PlayStation's critical darling, The Last of Us. With that being said, Jack 2 is still my favorite game by them and stands the test of time as one of PlayStation 2's greatest hits. It is impossible to talk about the PS2 without mentioning one of the generation's most successful series and specifically the peak of that series. Number 3 goes to Tony Hawk's Underground. Building on the already insanely addictive gameplay from the previous four Pro Skater entries, Underground completely flipped the script and introduced the two biggest features since THPS 3's Revert, a strong narrative, and finally being able to get off your skateboard. On top of these game-changing additions, the levels in this entry are superb and some of the absolute best in the series. Areas like New Jersey and Moscow are a huge combo lover's dreamland, and the helicopter jump in Hawaii is one of the story's defining and most memorable moments. Gameplay is also tweaked and refined to have some of the tightest grinding, tricking, and manuals to link together absolutely massive combos. Customization in the Tony Hawk universe has always been a huge focal point for the series, but this game took it to new heights with you being able to adjust every aspect imaginable. You honestly could have picked any entry in the series to go on this list, but Underground seemed the obvious choice and remains the hallmark entry to many of the series' diehard fans. Well, you knew it was going to be on here, and here it is at number 2, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I desperately wanted to pick GTA 3 to go here, as it is my favorite in the series and changed gaming forever. But let's be honest, if you owned a PlayStation 2, it was basically a given that you also owned San Andreas. The absolutely ludicrous amount of content that Rockstar somehow managed to shove into this game is still mind-blowing even today. 
Three full cities, a desert, and a countryside complete with a mountain with just about every side activity you could want made this one of the most robust games on the console and one that I'm sure every single one of us has some deeply ingrained nostalgia for. The customization was also unprecedented and was almost RPG-like in its nature, with you being able to build relationships, work out for a better physique, and customize your car to be the fast and furious tuner of your dreams. There's no denying just how big of a hit and important title San Andreas was for the PS2, especially with it being a console exclusive for its first year of life, and that's why it reigns as one of the best games of its generation and in its own franchise. And here we go, climbing up to the highest number one spot is Shadow of the Colossus. There's so much that can be said about this game and the footprint it left on the gaming industry. Team Ico made an absolute masterpiece with this one, one that even some shifty player and camera controls couldn't stop from being one of the most memorable games ever made. It's a game I wish I could go back to and play for the first time again, as the feeling you get when you encounter the first Colossi is so overwhelming that it still sticks out in my mind all these years later. Even though it's very polygonal by today's standards, its style and design were precisely why this game was the poster child for video games as an art form, and why even today it looks gorgeous and breathtaking. The legacy this game has left behind cannot be understated, and is exactly why the game saw a remaster for the PS3 and then got completely remade for the PS4, and this is why it's the definitive title for the PlayStation 2. And there you have it. Those are 20 games that I feel prove that the PlayStation 2 was the golden era of gaming. I know this is a little bit different than my normal videos, but I thought it would be a fun little video to make, so here it is. Uh, with that being said, I know there's tons I missed, like I said before, so let me know in the comments below what your favorite PlayStation 2 games were. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button, and then hit the bell as well if you want to get notifications every time I upload. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more of my mild gaming takes, and with that, I have been the Names Jer. Thanks for watching. See you later!